Hey, welcome to Level Pixel Level. And in this last video in the series, we're just going to add some more definition to this eye and the ability to deform it. Right now we have this blink option right here, and we have the ability to move the pupil within the eye. One thing we can do right now is sort of make interesting shapes with this eye, like bring this down and give it uh, an angry curve right here, or imply a cheek, almost with the bottom of the eye. So we're gonna be doing that today. The first thing I'm gonna do is delete half of this mechanism. So I'm gonna delete the entire right eye and only do this on the left eye, and then we'll just duplicate it over. It's gonna make it a little bit easier in the long run. And I'll click on this and delete this as well. So now we just have one eye we're gonna deal with right here. I'll just turn on these pieces so we have the lattice and the two empties driving our cast modifiers on that lattice. First thing I wanna do is just change these segments on this lattice. So the resolution U, I'm just gonna to put to five and that's gonna give us basically five points of articulation on the eye. And the W resolution, I'm just gonna to put to nine. I just want it to be an odd number. It's going to make weight painting a little bit easier. So with the lattice selected, I'm just gonna to go to local view and I'm gonna put my cursor at the origin and I'm gonna add a rig. So with this rig added, the first thing I'm gonna do is just put the bone in world space. I'll do shift S, selection of cursor, GY1. Now you cannot snap to the points in a lattice. This is a bug that Blender knows about, or not really a bug, I guess, just a feature that's not implemented. And something they are working on it. So in future videos, you might just be able to snap to these points here, which would make this a little bit easier. Instead, we're just gonna use the cursor. So I'm gonna select these two points up here. And I'm gonna do Shift S cursor to select it. Now that I have that, all I have to do is select on the bone and do Shift S selection to cursor. I'm just gonna rename this bone so it names itself as it gets copied to lattice top.001. So I need to duplicate this bone over and I'm just gonna do the same technique. You're gonna see me flip from object mode to edit mode a lot here. So I'll flip back to object mode, select the lattice, select these two points, do shift S, cursor to selected. I'll just select the bone, do shift D and do shift S, selection to cursor. Then I'll just click back on the lattice, click on these two points, do shift S, cursor to selected, and I'll click back on the rig, and I'll do shift D, shift S, selection to cursor. So you're probably seeing a pattern now here with my workflow as I go through things. I tend to use this method a lot. Um, it's just the way that I like to place bones just by getting the pivot point down with the cursor. And I tend to use the cursor all the time when I'm rigging in Blender. Okay, I have these five set up now, and I can do the same technique with the middle ones, but I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Um, I'm gonna select the middle points here. Let's make sure I have them selected. I'm gonna do Shift S, cursor to selected. So now that that's in the middle there, I'll go back to object mode. I'll select on the top bones here, and I'm gonna to go to edit mode. I'll just select these, and I'll do Shift D, Shift S, selection to cursor. Ah but it did this, right? It put all five bones at that cursor there, which is something I don't want. So I'm gonna undo that, and I'm gonna do Shift S, selection to cursor, keep offset. Now it's moved them all there with the offset, although it's put them sort of in the center here. This is easy to fix though. If I just select all the tails of the bone here, since I have snap turned on, I can snap to a rig. So I can snap to this rig bone here, and I'll do the same with the head of the bone. I'll go back to object mode, select on the lattice, go to edit mode, click on the bottom vertices, do shift S, cursor to selected. Go back to object mode, select on the bones, hit B, do a border select, do shift D, shift S, selection to cursor, keep offset. I know there's a lot of hotkeys in there, but I'm pretty much doing the same two hotkeys all the time, doing shift S to find my cursor location and doing shift D to duplicate bones. So I'll just select these, tail these bones here, push them forward, and I'll select the head of the bones here and just push them forward. Again, I can do this because I have snap on. Okay, let's get this rig connected now. Um, I'll click on the lattice. So right now the lattice is bone parented to the armature, which is okay, we're gonna keep that, but I'm gonna add a modifier. I'm going to add an armature, and the object is gonna be armature.001. What else I can do is just rename this really quickly to lattice deform, just to keep things clean. 
and I'll rename this to control rig. So with the lattice to form, I'm also just going to quickly rename some of the bones here. So instead of lattice top, it's going to be lattice bottom. So I'm just going to rename these bones here really quickly to lattice underscore middle dot zero zero one. And I'll just copy that over to these other bones here. And I'll do lattice bottom dot zero zero one. I'll just copy that over. Okay, this is just about ready to go. What I need to do now is make the vertex groups. So under vertex groups, um, I know I'm going to need 15. So I'm just going to add these until I see 14 as the last digit, which is just right there. 14 because the first one does not have a number. And the first one, I'm just going to double click on it to rename. And I'll rename it lattice top dot zero zero one. I'm just going to copy that name. What I can do is hit tab to go to the next vertex group and just do uh, paste or command V or control V on a Windows machine. And it will rename it to 002 for me, which is perfect. So I just go along there and rename those vertex groups. This one's going to be middle dot zero zero one. And I'll just rename some of these vertex groups. That's why naming is really important while you're rigging, um, especially keeping naming simple. If the naming was more complex, I wouldn't be able to remember what these groups are called, and I'd have to constantly reference my rig over and over again. Maybe in the future as well, I can make rigs on lattices with weight painting as well, which sort of avoid this whole thing. So what we're going to do is I'm going to select these points here, and for lattice top dot zero zero one, I'm going to give them a hundred percent weight. Now I've already messed that up because I had these ones down here selected, so I'll just select those and put the weight to zero. So I'll just select that again up there and make sure I have that at one. Good, I'll go to last zero two and assign that as well. And I'm just going along and assigning my weights at one on that top one to the top group here. I'm just about done, okay. So what we're gonna do is I'll just draw this out actually is the top row is going to be one the middle row is going to be a value of one to these bones here. And the bottom row is going to be a value of one to these bones here. Then in between the bones, I'm going to do a rate, uh, gradient. So this is going to be 0 0.75, 0 0.5, 0 0.25 going down, and it'll be the opposite going the other way. So I'll probably do the first one and I'll show you how I'm going to do it. So this one, I'm going to do 0 0.75 and assign, and I'm just going along and assigning these weights. There is a huge chance of messing this up and human error here. Um, it's okay, just keep going along. And the more you work with this, the better you're gonna get at this as well. So just double check those, those look good. Now I'm gonna do weight of 0.5. And I'll select on this row here. And it is a lot of clicking and assigning weights, but the payoff is going to be awesome when you finally get some really interesting shapes on that eye and you can turn it to the animator. And it might seem complicated, but as a rigger, it's complicated for us, so it's easy for the animation team. That's sort of the key behind this whole thing, is that yes, it is always going to be complicated when you're rigging these objects, but then for the animation team, it's gonna be awesome. Okay, let's do the middle one now, and you'll sort of see where the fall off is gonna be. So this one here is gonna be a value of one. And I'll just do this one first before I move on, just cause I'm gonna do a bit of a trick. I know that these two are both gonna be 0.75 here. So I'll just select both of them and put them at 0.75 right now. I know that these two are both going to be at 0.5. So I'll do that right now. And I know that these ones are both going to be at 0.25. So now from this bone here, I'll just test it, has a fall off to that bone there. And you see how we're sort of weighting that lattice to get a really interesting shape. So I'm just going to go along and weight paint the rest of the lattice really quickly now. And I'll probably just speed this up a little bit just as I go through it.
Okay, I'm done assigning all the weights, and it may seem like it took a bit of a while to get those done. Uh, it is a bit complicated when you're assigning these two because you have to auto-normalize the math as you're working, just so you don't get a double transform. Um, it's different when you're weight painting characters because the computer will auto-normalize for you. Again, there's probably a way you could do this with code where it auto-normalizes as well for you, but I think I'm at the point where I just haven't read that code. It's just been too quick, so I just do it by hand. I'm going to test this now. I'm going to grab the rig and I'll go to uh, pose mode. And I'm just going to move all of these and I'm making sure I don't get a double transform. And this is looking good so far. So I'll put it back to the origin and I'll exit local view. I'll go view, local view, toggle local view. So now I can test this out. I can move this and yeah, I'm getting some interesting deformation on that eye. Now I can grab this one here and I can probably combine them where I can take this other rig and move that as well. Cool, so I can get some really fun shapes. Even if I have this zeroed out, I can make the eye bigger as well. Okay, so this is great, but again, it really sucks as an animator to be working with two rigs. So we're gonna combine these rigs um, and with a set of controllers to the main rig so that we can eventually hide this one. The first thing I do is just take this rig, shift click on this rig, I'm gonna go to pose mode, I'm gonna select on the eye control and I'm gonna to go to pose, parent, bone. I just wanna make sure that everything is stable and I'm not getting any double transforms as I move this eye in space. Cool, so this secondary rig and the lattice are bone parented to the eye rig. A bone parent means that as this bone moves in space, these objects are moving in object mode, not in pose mode. And that really prevents me from getting a double transform. So the last thing we have to do really is connect these rigs. And we're gonna do that with some copy transforms to some controls on our main rig. First thing I'm gonna do is select this entire rig and I'm actually going to duplicate it. So now I have two rigs in my outliner here. I'm gonna take lattice to form.001. I'm gonna shift click on my control rig and I'm actually gonna join them together. I'm going to go to object, join. So now I have a duplicate set of controls on my control rig that match the lattice rig. First thing I'm going to do is actually grab all of those controls. So I'll flip to uh, local mode now. I'll go view, local view, toggle local view. And I'm just going to grab these controls here. If you ever can't see them, just turn on x-ray. And then you'll be able to just sort of snipe it there. That's the pupil. I don't want that. I want that lattice middle there. And I'll select these as well. And I just want to make them a little bit smaller so that they're easier to see. Okay, and I forgot to select two up here, so I'll do these as well. And I'm going to flip to pose mode, and I'm actually just going to give them all a circle shape. So under custom object, I'll just give them the eye shape. They can just have that same shape there, which is just a circle. And I'll just go along and do that to every single bone here. Those are done, and I'm actually just going to do a couple things to clean up the rig right now. I'm just going to give these a custom color. So I'll go to my rig. I'll go to uh, bone groups. I'll just add two here. I'm going to call one just main, and the other one I'm just going to call tweaker. I'll just assign these to the tweaker, and I'll just make them red. I'll click on the main. I'll do control I to select the inverse, or select inverted here. I'll sign these and I'll just make them uh, blue. So these controls here, I want them all actually parented up to the main eye control. So I'll just do that really quickly. I have to go to edit mode, control P, keep offset. Okay, we're just about done. I'm gonna go to view, local view, toggle local view. I'm just gonna turn off these axes here. So right now, the eye control is moving the lattice and that secondary rig in a pose mode, but I want these secondary controls to move these bone groups here as well. So that these can move without having to go into the second rig as an animator. And again, we're doing all this just to avoid a double transform. With this bone selected, I'm just going to add a constraint, copy transforms. It's gonna to go to the control rig. 
and the bone is itself. So it's just lattice top, since we duplicated that rig over, dot zero, zero, 001. Now, every single one of these need a constraint. So I'll flip to object mode and I'll just select this rig here. And I'm just gonna go to local view. So I've isolated this rig. And the first thing I do is select these bones. I'm gonna select on this one last. I'm gonna do control C, copy selected constraints. And I'll do copy transforms. Now, if you didn't see that last menu, it's because you don't have the copy attributes add-on turned on. You have to go to edit preferences and under the add-ons, just type in copy and you'll have 3D view copy attributes menu and this will ship with your version of Blender. Now, all of these bones unfortunately have snapped right to here and I can't actually access them, but I can if I turn off pose position. So I'm gonna put it to rest pose. That way the constraints have no value over the rig. Then all I need to do is come to each one and just change the target to itself or to the bone that's corresponding to it in the control rig. Now for something like this, I would actually do this with code for these names. I wouldn't go through and actually do this manually. Let me know if a coding for riggers uh, tutorial is something you guys are interested in and it's something I can start working on. Um, I do use code all the time to speed up just little things like this. I tend to just write code right into the console in Python. And if I'm doing something over and over again, I'll eventually write it into a tool or an add-on that I'll just use every day in my rigging work. So I'm just pasting these names in here and just matching them up. And I'm just about done. Okay, last thing I'll do is I'll click on the rig and I'll put it back to the pose position. And I had a little problem here with some of the names I'll just fix up. I just forgot to increment the digits as I went along. Again, this is a reason I would probably do this with code just because the code is not going to mess this up. And I'll go back to my rig and turn on pose position. Okay, we're good to go now. So I'm gonna go to view, local view, toggle local view. Now, these secondary controllers on my main rig will move these parts of the eye. So I can come in here and actually shape the eye. I can make it bigger if I want to. And all of this lives on a modifier within the lattice so the eye blink can still come down and squish that eye. So that's working now. And I have all these pieces and I can get some really interesting shapes. And that's essentially what I'd do to build a more dynamic eye shape. Um, I would now just mirror all these pieces over and just build another eye uh, pretty much the exact same way. Um, now I can actually hide these empties and hide this lattice as well. And I'll hide this rig too. So you can hide all those construction pieces so that the animator only has these pieces where they can actually shape the eye. So this is how I actually built the eyes in my Hilda rig. Uh, it was pretty much this exact same setup. It was just a rig on top of the pieces so I could get these uh, interesting shapes. Be sure to download these files. Uh, they're all up on Gumroad for you for free if you want to download them. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.